My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. Before we start today's episode, there's been a few minor tweaks between the previous one and this one, so we're just going to cover the changes first of all and go through a bit of exposition behind the changes and the thinking behind them. The first change you can probably see on your screen right now is we have some new trucks available. These unlocked during the outro ride in the last episode. These are the Benz trucks. We have the Benz uh, side stakes and the Benz tipper trucks. These, sorry, tarpaulin, not tippers. These are the Benz tarpaulin trucks. They are superior to the steam trucks that we had previously. You may also be able to tell there are now more of these on this line, on this uh, fuel production little change in the Bayview refinery area. I think we had four originally, we now have about ten, I think, something like that. So that's the first change, that's just to increase the fuel flow through from uh, the Bay refinery. The other change, if we just head over here, I have extended this platform and this is the one where our fuel trains come in so we now have a f longer platform space available our trains now fit on the platform so they're no longer penalized with a slowdown in their loading speed there's also no further overhanging of the back ends of the trains when they're on the platform I've had to rework some of this to compensate, so this little bit has been redone. I have also gone through and double tracked a lot of it as well. So all the way through up here, you can see that we've got these new style bridges available, that's not one of them, so I'm pointing out the completely, completely the wrong thing there. Um, where is it? Here we go, yes. So, well, somewhere we've got these new bridges. Oh, here it's the road bridge, where was it? Where was it? Here, yes. We've got the new style bridges available as we can see as well and the new textures for the roads and the sidewalks so we can upgrade them sooner rather than later we've also now got traffic lights on our intersections and they've been unlocked uh, at some point when we ticked through one of the years I, I assume it was the transition into 1910 so let's bring up the uh, UI so looking very healthy, uh, north of $300 million with a cash flow of around $40 million. The other thing I have done is we had four trains on the this route. We've only got two now. I think that's enough for now, but we'll monitor that. And if we do need more, then we will. I've also got rid of one of the tankers that we had. We did, a, if you remember, purchased two of them. I've just dropped that down to one because one seems to be enough it's only a short distance and we can always add a second ship in later if it's required so some of the trucks have been updated as we've got the Benzers in Brooklyn delivering the fuel to Brooklyn I've also updated the the lumber trucks in Worcester that are bringing the logs to the sawmill they do have higher speed and higher capacity and that's quite a critical industry that we have there. We've got a lot of things dependent on that. So that's been updated. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start the date progression and we're just going to carry on. And the first thing we're going to tackle is getting food down here. If you remember, we got the line infrastructure all in place, ready to go and the associated infrastructure around here which is not the Schaffhausen ships the only thing we need to do is get a line from here down into here crossed over and that way it can access all the way down here and into the Jersey Freight Hub so let's make a start so we want these trains to use this platform here we'll keep catenary now and between episodes I'll upgrade the tracks to uh, fully encompass the new catenary that we have. So that will be done off camera rather than spending an entire episode going through and upgrading everything. So 
So we're going to bring all these together. And then we're going to want a diamond here. 45 is fine. And if we can get the opposite leg put in, that would be fantastic. But it appears it's going to be awkward about this. So let's just try it one more time here. I think it's because the where we've started diamond tracks perhaps aren't 100% parallel at that point so if you just push it forward a bit in fact this time we will go for 50 miles per hour on this diamond there we go right and then these lines here we're gonna bring them past Newark and connect them up there so it's a relatively straight shot and it should be rather simple to achieve there's no point elevating the tracks, I shouldn't say, because I don't believe the tracks down there are greatly elevated. It's just this little bit of landscape here where it's a little bit rougher and uh, it's trying to push us upwards, but we really don't need to do that. So we're going to have some tunnels here, or one tunnel with the looks of it, which is, which is fine by me. And this will be a slow junction here because it's a little bit tight okay so these tracks are actually elevated so should have maybe measured up before we started but it's no problem and what sort of speed are we getting 40 43 yeah it's it's not a great but we can tweak it if we need to but just to get the ball rolling we'll go with it and then what we need is these lines to make their way all the way over here so we're gonna have to remove these signals so we shall do that now and we'll just reposition them once we're done because we'll need them to cover the junction and the crossover let's see I think that's as good as we're gonna get which is fine it's serviceable and over there right so now we need to think about the signals so we need one there we'll have one there and we need one there and then on the return stretch we need one there and one there and then we'll have one here to clear the signal we have these two there so they're gonna do this that job for us and then along here we're just gonna chuck down a couple of blocking signals as per usual between here and the food refinery just here so where's the entrance of the slip there it is there that will do quite nicely so our trains can get all the way across and then take this route down here over this bridge across here over this bridge nope I've missed it they're gonna come off here and into the Jersey freight hub Right, so let's set up where we want the food to go in Brooklyn, which now accepts machines, as we can see, and we can see just here as well. So we want an unload point. We have one for the fuel, of course, but the food is going to a different district, so we'll put the food there. Yeah, why not? And then we want a new line that's coming from the freight hub to there, carrying the food. Uh, we'll not do the loading orders, but we will just specify that they're only picking up food. So when we have multiple cargo items coming in here, they're not going to have a mixed load. So you went onto that platform, which is, you know, that's fine. Let's quickly rename this, and this will be the Jersey Food Delivery. It's not Jersey, I beg your pardon. It is Brooklyn, of course. That's better. Brooklyn Food Delivery. We have a depot here which we can use for this, so that's okay. Here are the trucks that we were just talking about there, the tarpaulin truck and the side stakes. We'll use the tarpaulin for this one because the side stakes is not equipped to carry food. And we'll go for four of those. Put the maintenance up because they are going in amongst the residential area in Brooklyn. And we'll put them on the line. Brooklyn food delivery. Okay. Right, so now we need, a, in fact, no, now we need to set up the food delivery line, or the food freight line. So we're coming from Yonkers Food Plant, 
Let's change the colour here so it stands out clearly. And you're coming into there. So you've chosen platform three at Yonkers, which is fine because that's an empty platform. You're going the right way, you're doing what we anticipated you would do. And what the heck, you may as well use a first platform there when you get to Jersey. Right here, we'll have you fully loaded. There we go. And this will be rail cargo. And this is what do we want to call this? We'll call this Jersey Food Freight. Or Jersey Hub Food Freight, I think. Okay, now we can purchase the train. So let's take a trip up to Worcester and buy vehicles. No new trains or wagons as of yet. It's only the Benzers that have been unlocked that we missed. So let's, uh, we don't have to worry about that. So cargo wagons, it's the box cars. And how many do we want to take? We'll start with 10, I think. There we go, we'll start with 10. And we'll start off with two of these. Don't need to worry about the maintenance on these, I don't think. So we'll leave that set to default. And head back down here so we can see the line. Jersey Hub Food Freight. And away they go. We'll just make sure they can get through Worcester without any delay. Let's see here. And let's put it onto times four game speed just while the trains make their way out. So we're not waiting around for too long for them to clear Worcester and make their way over to the food plant. While we're waiting here we can see the side state variants of the bends which are bringing the logs to the sawmill as I mentioned and they've got that higher capacity and higher speed so an improvement all around. Right, we'll do what we did last time and just send you on your way with a partial load of planks just so these trains can make their way through. Given that we've now got two consumers of the food from the Yonkers food plant it might be worth checking the grain throughput Although with that being said, because the other consumer is Worcester, and Worcester ums and ahs as to whether it wants food or not, maybe we'll just do that a little bit later, because I think we'll be okay. The one thing we might want to look at is bumping up this number here. Our bricks are pretty good, our machinery is spot on, uh, the food is still indecisive, so can't do anything about that. So. Is that, is that both of our trains through? Yes it is, there's one, there's the other, so we'll drop back down to one times game speed. Okay, so, what I'm tempted to do with Worcester is give them another bus service, or a couple of bus services, but they're just inner city bus services that just go from the residential areas to the commercial areas and the residential areas to the industrial areas and that's it just to attempt to boost the numbers in Worcester because if we can get this public transport number up a little more perhaps we'll attract more food and this demand will stabilize so it won't keep chopping and changing so if we wanted to do that then so well we have a bus stop there but Ideally, we'd want a separate bus stop for this, and I'm going to put it there so they can walk between, and we'd have it come down here or down here, whichever, and you could drop off there. So just point to point, and then we'd want one to go down here. And again, if we cluster them nearby, the passengers can walk between the three, and we'll have you come down there yeah so let's set these set up so in fact first of all we probably will need a few waypoints in and around here so let's just stick a couple down we have one there and let's put one there right I think that should be enough right so new line so our bus is a purpley color so if we go for a dark green, just so we've got that differentiation, and we're coming, I didn't mean to click that. So we are coming from this stop here. 
this waypoint next. And then we said you were going to drop off where? I can't remember. Was it this one? Yes, it must have been this one. There, and then head back. Okay, fine. This one will have coloured. Let's see. Let's have black. And you're going this way. You're dropping off here. And then making your way back round. Yeah, that's all fine. Right, so let's just rename these. So just double check, yep, we're using B for bus. So this can be the Worcester Loop 1. And line 2 will be Worcester Loop 2. There we go. Our depot is down here. Passenger, Max, and I'm going to say we'll have six so we'll have three per line so first of all they're all having their maintenance jumped up to the max and these are loop one and these guys are going to be loop two and there we go and that should hopefully just boost this number a little from 1097 we'll just check that if we remember 1097 if we come back in a little while this hopefully will have increased a little this number is also very low, this uh, private transportation connection amount. And what we could do for that is give them a road link into Boston. And let's have a look here. So we want country roads and we'll have the max speed country roads. And if we just build them, what in essence will be a freeway or a highway, I'd, I'd I apologise, I'm not sure what the difference is. I think the freeways are the, the larger ones, the highways tend to be a little smaller, but obviously still faster and the greater capacity than your local smaller roads, shall we say. I think that's the way about it, I'm not sure. That's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking with it. And we'll have this guy come through here. We don't want it to connect onto that road. We want to avoid that and keep on heading this way. And it can connect in somewhere up here. Like that. And what the heck. Let's also go ahead and boost that road size there as well. And well, let's have a think here. Could we get them down into Providence as well? More than likely. We have this road here. So what we're going to do here is upgrade this. Although... We can't upgrade the tunnel due to a collision, which is unfortunate, but we can upgrade the rest. So if we keep the the tunnel at a smaller capacity, it's fine. In fact, we may as well upgrade this. I do believe this goes all the way to Boston. There we go. So we'll upgrade that. And again, couldn't do this bit, but eventually we might put a tunnel or a bridge over that anyway. So we'll leave that for the time being. You're just going to an industry, so you're not actually go anywhere interesting. So what we want now is to build our own road and we'll have it branch off of this one somewhere it's maybe like this and we want it to jump over this line we certainly don't want a level crossing if we can avoid it so let's use the modern bridge uh, you stay level please there we go good height clearance there so that's all good and we want you to come down you may be able to tell I was mistaken when I said we've unlocked the new style of road textures. We haven't done that at all, unfortunately. But never mind. Um, right, let's get this back down to... There we go. Yeah, we're still using the uh, the dirt track style. I guess they'll unlock in 1920, I believe it is. It's just the, uh, the new bridge that has a more modern texture to it. And where do we want to bring this one into? Should we connect? I'd say we connect it into this one, really, for now. Right, let's have a look here. Again, we want to bridge over the top here, and keeping it level once again. New style road, or new style bridge, I should say. Back down to ground level and connect it in. And you may as well, yeah, you. Retain your height actually because you're you're about to jump over 
several train lines here, three of them in fact. So let's just make sure you do that. Okay, so you jump the first one, okay. So again, just changing the, the style here. This one, might need to put a little hump in the bridge. That's okay. And this one, I think we saw it was automatically clearing. Yep, there we go. And then you go into there. Straightforward enough. And then you... You don't need dropping off that extremely. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then that can just curl and connect in like that. Okay, let's just return to Worcester and see what effect, if any, this has all had. So that's gone up. That was 1097, so it's jumped a little. I think that's gone up a bit. I can't remember the exact figure it was given us before, but I think it was a little bit higher than 466. And they should rise even more. And what we could also do is this road here does go into Springfield. So we could upgrade this one as well, just to give it another slight boost. So let's do that. We'll not redraw the road, it already exists. We'll just put it to the maximum, or the, the largest style available, the largest capacity like this. And in fact, what we could also do is give them a second connection in here, like that. And that'll keep them happy. And that might even bump that up a little bit more, 1120, so it's gone up a tiny bit. So yes, that's all good. Let's go back down to New York now, after that little venture up there. In fact, first things first, let's go to the vehicle manager. And let's upgrade all of our trucks, shall we? We have upgraded some of them, but not all of them. So the buses, we can't do. So we can skip all these Bs, but these Ts can be done. So let's see here. So they're using it and them, yep. Brooklyn Food Delivery and Fuel Delivery are using the modern ones. The These ones here are using the old style. But I think the Bricks Delivery can actually use the side stakes, yes. So steel and bricks. We don't have anything shipping steel. We have another line shipping logs. But any Bricks Deliveries can make use of these. I don't, where's the other logging one? There it is in Trenton. This one can also have that. So all the rest. So that's the food delivery. What else is it? The fuel delivery, the food delivery, machinery. They've been done. And the tools delivery. All these will want the tarpaulins. And because these are deliveries i.e. they are inside a city itself, including all of these, we really want their maintenance to make sure it's up high, just to keep a cap on the emissions as much as we possibly can. And that's going to help stimulate the, the growth of the cities as well. Okay, so where, what do you want to focus on next? We could, utilising this here, drop some food into Jersey. Although it's going to be slightly awkward. Or is it? Because what we could do is have it come across here. As long as our bridge is high enough for the tanker to pass underneath, we're going to be happy. So let's just have a look here. So if we knock this up for... What's going on? There it is. No. Okay, let's see. How would we do this? Now we have the new heavyweight 281 parlor. Interesting. We might want to consider utilising that. That, I don't believe, is keeping the waterway open. However, that is. Right, so... Let's just finish this off first and get a delivery set up into Jersey City. And then we'll come back and just have a look at that ship, uh, that new passenger compartment. And see if it's something we want to uh, look into. 
Right, that's too steep. Let's have you go down to there. And then can you go down from there, or is it too much slope? Yes, maybe if maybe we went the other way and brought it in down here. Let's just try that. Let's just get you down to there. And then you should go into there okay. It's a little bit steep, but it's going to work, so that's okay. Now, this is the tricky bit. No, that's not going to work. Of course it's not. What was I thinking? What we're going to need to do is skirt around the top of this if we can, which is doable, but it's going to be tricky. Let's see, yep. Yeah. And I think now we could start dropping it down a fraction. Can you do that? No. But to be fair, we don't necessarily need that road. As long as we've got that one there, that's good enough for us. All right, let's see it again here. Can you do it now? Yes, if we arch it a little. And how's that? That's fine. And then bring you in to there. Yeah. So it's a bit convoluted, but it will work. Righty-ho. So now we can do another line from here to, well, we haven't actually told it where it's dropping off yet, have we? That's quite near, quite local, that's good. So from here to here, so let's go back to that line and give it the correct colour. So, oh, we'll just, oh, no, 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 clicking all the wrong things, want to click that. So while we've got that open, we will just quickly do that. And then you're going to there and back. Excellent. You're on a different platform, so that's good. So, T, and this is Jersey Food Freight. Jersey Food Delivery, I beg your pardon. There we go. So, again, now we can get some vehicles for that. And we want the tarps. And I'll say we'll go for four of those. I don't know if uh, our food freight trains have made it the station yet but we'll go and inspect that in just one second to there right let's see have they made it yes we have one there already that's fantastic and it's not far for full load and you're the second one you can't get through yet and I dare say are you blocking anything are you blocking the grain yes if you wait there you will be blocking the grain do we have a grain train on its way we do so, if you've got no grain left, or you've got plenty, you've got loads of it. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to send you on your way now. There we go. That way you can wait here and the grain train can come and go without any hassle. And yes, you're not fully loaded, but you're, you're near enough for a first journey. It's going to be okay. Right then, I think the next commodity of focus is likely to be bricks and the question is where do we want to supply from let's look at our suppliers i think the ones up in yeah worcester and springfield are probably a little bit too far however i think we'll go for hartford and that's yeah that's not a million miles away and we have this quarry here which can supply it everybody's taking machinery on board and in terms of getting this connected, what we could do is have it pass through on this platform here. So we're not having to lie down a load of new tracks. We just have this to put a bit of track into here. So that would be the bricks going out that way. And then we could maybe even have the stone come out this way and curve over and go that way rather than cutting off all of this access. So I think that's likely to be the way ahead there. But I think we'll do that a little bit later. Let's just go back to Worcester and see how it's performing now. So the numbers are looking pretty good. The tools, as I said, we probably want to have a look at if we can. And I think the best way we're able to do that 
and it's probably not going to be in this episode but rather than having this as a multi-train so tools and planks we'll have a dedicated planks delivery planks freight up into here and then a dedicated tools train coming back down so we'd have to reevaluate our platform assignments down here so nothing can box one another in and stop the whole chain dead right well i think at this point we'll have a quick look at our line overview and see how we're looking now these buses i couldn't particularly care if they're making a profit or a loss so i'm just going to completely disregard them and in fact let's just go for the trains so these trains here are making a loss but they tend to do that from time to time so i think that is okay um hmm. now that's probably overall a non-profit line so we might want to tweak that let's just drop this back down to the last 10 years yeah i think yeah hmm, it might be oh well who knows we'll see we'll have to give it a little bit longer because we have just changed it and sold a few locomotives and we had issues where a few of them were running empty or partially loaded i think that issue has been resolved now this one has just been set up so we can disregard the jersey jersey hub food freight the steel freight line i think it is profitable by and large yeah so we make massive profits every what's that every sixth year every fifth or sixth year but even when we're only making smaller profits we are still profitable so that's fine what about this one here let's have a look yeah that's profitable even in the off years the profits we have made do more than compensate so that's fine What's the machine refray? I doubt this one is going to be profitable. Mm, give or take. That's, but it's not the end of the world. This one definitely won't be. I don't know. No, I think all of these combined wouldn't uh, compensate for that. So, yeah. Uh, all the others are very profitable. I mean, the fuel production now has jumped up to 21 million, as we can see. So we know that's profitable. The Amtrak, look at that. 7 million profit. So that's a really, really good line. I'm happy with that for a passenger line that's pretty impressive lakeshore not quite so much but it's only a smaller route so that's arguably to be expected the grain freight trains are just chugging away nicely our crude oil shunt in new jersey is also very very profitable massive throughput there that's 711 um i wonder then if we are swamping our delivery trucks that's why i did put more on no, it doesn't seem to be. We're keeping a good handle on that, so that's okay. Right, I think the last thing we'll do today is we unlocked the heavyweight 281 parlor, 281 parlor. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we want vehicle manager, we want our trains, and we want our Amtraks. Let's sh we'll, we'll compare it on the lakeshore because we only have two, so it's easier. The, you know you don't have to scroll through loads and loads let's have a look passenger so we're using the six axles the heavyweight parlors are faster 112 miles per hour, so considerably faster but they have less capacity they are lighter and their emissions are ever so slightly lower as well however you lose half the loading speed also i don't think any of our trains can do 112 miles per hour let's just double check what we are using it's the atlantics no, so it's the, the capped at 62 anyway, so until we get a, a high speed or higher speed locomotive, uh, there's no need to swap out for the heavyweight parlours at this point. Although, that being said, the fact that they are lighter, it is going to affect the acceleration from a standing start. So just out of curiosity, let us have a quick look. So we can't replicate the capacity, so we're losing three passengers. But well, let's see here. So 62 miles an hour in 2,795 meters. So yeah, they are, you know, they've got greater acceleration. Maybe it is worthwhile swapping those out, but the gains, it's not a massive, massive gain. It's what, 250 meters, give or take. So I think, no, I think we'll, we will just sit on those for now, after all, our Amtraks are both making us decent profit. We don't need to 
overly concern ourselves with them they're happily chugging away in the background with no issues just check we're not flooding this platform nope our extra cargo buildings are giving us more than enough storage capacity there so that's all good let's just upgrade these roads here because in the uh, not too distant future they're going to be quite busy I can foresee as it links between the two settlements let's also finish this one off here as well and in fact we may as well link it all up like this and like this is that going to affect the routing of some of our services yes our bus now comes back this way into the station but that's okay and you're so you're coming this way oh I see yes because if originally you're coming along here weren't you because of, you're going through this waypoint here well what we can do to compensate or to make that a little bit more sensible is something like this okay so what we have here the Mac AC flatbeds and tarpaulin trucks and the 282 Mikados which might be useful for us on some of our freight lines so we'll take a look at that in a moment after we have just tweaked this bus line so let's just always see what we can see so it's the Queen station link that's going a bit skew if at the moment so after so it's on your way back in you're hitting waypoint Brooklyn waypoint number two this one well let's have you do something like this how does that do? That's better. That's a bit, yeah, that's tidy. Um, let's see what you're you coming that way through. So this is your way in. So arguably you don't need to do that little dog leg there. So if we get rid of waypoint one, and I dare say waypoint number three, but keep Queen's waypoint two. So you win that way. So they do cross over there, but that's fine. There's not many of them, so it's not going to cause any huge issues, I shouldn't say. Any of our other bus lines been rerouted? Yeah, this one's now doing something a little bit strange. So you're coming in this way, that's fine. What we want you to do is come out here and come down this way, really. So you want to go to, after Queen's Bay point number four, go that way. Oh, you just, you, that's, I don't know why it does that. It gets confusing. It goes from the uh, wide roads to the uh, narrower, narrower roads. All the R's there tripping up. Fat tongue in it. Uh, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Right, so let's just have a quick look at the Mercado, and that's where we'll call it a day, I think. So let's pick on a freight line. In fact, let's pick on our Worcester freight line. The one that runs to Boston and back. So that is... In fact, we'll use this because... Oh my God, that's an antiquated train. You're still using... What is that? The, is that the Jupiter? Or the, I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's the... Uh, d -d 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 what's it called? I know it. It's the Mogul. That's right. Right. Let's see if perhaps you'll be better served with, say, the... And you're also using the old style uh, wagons as well. Hmm. Right, so this one is getting a straight up replacement and I don't care about matching speed or anything. So let's have the Mercado. And what capacity are you? I don't know. Um, but whatever, we'll, we'll get it similar, I'm sure. And if we go for 10, there we go. Right, um, yeah, this one here, because then we can actually do a comparison. Because at the minute we're using Atlantics on this. So we might be better served leaving these ones unchanged, but we can have a look and see see the difference. So Mikado, let, oh my God, look at that power! Good Lord, that's an improvement. So yeah, Mikados it is. So they're not going to actually these aren't as fast, but that's fine because our wagons are limited to 50 anyway. So uh, yeah, let's get let's get them rolled out, shall we? Is it going to be better for our long haul super heavyweight trains, you know, the double Atlantics? Let's have a look. Manage the vehicles. So let's see, what are they in terms of price actually? Oh, they are a lot more expensive. If we single headed it, how would it be? Do you know what? That isn't too bad. That's very, very similar. And what's that? A double header that is uh, what, about 900,000. This is 700. 
But if we were to double head it, just out of curiosity. Ooh, that is nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a ridiculously profitable line, as we saw a few moments ago, overall. So yeah, let's let's swap out for double-headed Mikados, because they are nice and beasty. Certainly the most beasty trains that we have right now. In fact, shall we just swap out all of our freight lines at this point for Mikados? Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, yeah, what the heck, let's let's do it. So, well, there's, in fact, I'll do it off camera because there's quite a lot of them. The last one we'll check on camera uh, is this grain freight train because this has become quite an integral train now because it's supplying, or the, uh, the food is supplying not only Worcester but now Brooklyn and Jersey City. So these ones are quite important trains. So let's see how you would do here. So 50 miles per hour in 1.2 kilometers versus 1.6 kilometers. Well, let's see, could we do something a little bit like this where we boost the train length and retain the current rates? 94, well, that's still, what about that? 1400, 600, still there, there, bounce. There we go, that's what we'll do. We'll swap out for the Mikados and we're going to chuck on an extra, what's that, one, two, three, four, four wagons, is it, we put on there? And that'll be the last thing we do today. Oh, didn't put it on that one, put it on that one, please. Two, three, four, five, no, it was six. Um, yeah, it was six, I've gone overboard, 100, six. yeah, that's fine. I was looking at the length there, and of course, this is a slightly shorter train than the Mikado, so I couldn't get the length to match up. So, focus on the capacity, 180, so it is six wagons. There we go. And now, Loco, Mikado. What does that look like in the... Uh, I only, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that, because it's only changing the, the cab roof colour, which is not too drastic or offensive. So, 24 million, money well spent. We didn't do you. You've still got the Atlantic. Now you want the Mikado. There we go. That's better. And let's just have a quick look at these Mikados. Where are you? You can go away. There we go. Lovely looking train. Looks pretty beasty, pretty powerful, and it, it is. I mean, you've seen the, uh, the increased cargo capacity we've been able to get away with there. An extra six, six wagons on that one, and it still has a uh, superior acceleration factor than the uh, the old setup so everybody is nice and happy how are these guys just before this you know just before we go how are these guys doing you've not had a full load yet i guess you haven't either maybe we've got two yeah i don't think you need that many wagons then so you two will drop you down to let's subtract one how's that yeah 108 that seems to be what they're shipping at the minute 108 so there we go. Save a bit of money. And well, what the heck. Let's give them Mikados as well. Because I like the Mikado. It's a nice train. Just for the fun of it. There we go. Right. Yep. And that's where we'll leave it for today. And in fact, what the heck. Let's treat ourselves to a ride on a Mikado. Since we have one right in front of us and it's just leaving. So we get to go all the way into the Jersey Freight Hub on our lovely new locomotive. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as per and as always. Any uh, sort of you know likes and subscribes are always welcome. But uh, that's obviously always down to you guys. I appreciate them nonetheless. For now, all that remains for me to say is as always, ladies and gentlemen, you take very good care of yourselves. Enjoy the cab ride. It's tata for now. <laughs>